In this video, I'm going to show you how to start using your launch key to create music in Ableton Live 10. Everything that's shown in this video applies to the launch key 25, 37, 49 and 61 key models, but the sections using the faders only apply to the 49 and 61 key models. Below this video, you'll see a link to download an Ableton project file that I'll show you how to open and start using so that we're not starting from a blank slate. Click below to download the project file. On a PC, open your file explorer and go to the downloads folder. Right click on the downloaded file and select extract all. Ensure that show extracted files when complete is checked and then hit extract. Once the folder is extracted, locate the .als file and double click it to open the project. On a Mac, open your Finder and navigate to the Downloads folder. Double click on the downloaded file to unzip it. Once the folder is unzipped, locate the .als file and double click it to open the project. This is what you'll see when you open the project file. This view is called the session view and the colored clips that you see on screen are audio loops, each of which representing a different building block of a song, like a drum loop or a bass line, for example. I'm gonna show you how to launch these clips to experiment with different combinations, and then I'll show you how to capture your own drum patterns and melodies. The colored box on screen tells you which clips you're currently controlling with the launch keys pads. You can move this up and down using these two arrows. Move the box back up to the top and press this scene launch button to play all of the clips in the first row, which is also called a scene. The stop solo mute button controls the function of the bottom row of pads. In its default state, the bottom row of pads can be used for clip launching. Pressing the stop solo mute button once turns the pad red and shows the stop buttons, which you can use to stop clips from playing on each track. Pressing the button again turns it blue and shows the solo buttons, which can be used to solo just one track and temporarily mute all others. Pressing the button again turns it yellow and shows the mute buttons, which allow you to mute tracks. Pressing the button once more returns it to its default clip launching state. Feel free to experiment with launching clips in the session view to find combinations that you like. Press stop on the launch key to stop playback. Now let's look at how to record your own drum patterns. You'll see the track User Drums on the right hand side of the session view, which you can scroll to using the track select buttons here, with the track names being displayed on screen. This has a selection of drum sounds for you to use to make your own drum patterns. Depending on the number of keys that your launch key has, you may find the drums on your keys immediately, or you may need to use the octave down buttons before they become available. Alternatively, you can hold shift and press the drums pad to put the pads into drum mode. If you want to have a jam to come up with some ideas, then mute the existing drums by clicking just here, and then press the play button on the launch key to play the rest of the track, 
and experiment with the drum sounds, making sure that user drums is the selected track. You can press stop on the launch key to stop the track. If you play something that you like, then you can press capture MIDI to retrieve that pattern and use the start and end markers to find your best take. I'm going to right click on this MIDI clip and delete it and show you another way to record. Now that you're ready to record your patterns, press click on the launch key to turn on the metronome which will keep you in time. Now press record on the launch key and we'll be recording continuously until you press stop on the launch key. Don't worry about getting this perfect or if you'd need to briefly pause, we'll go in and select the best part of the take afterwards. Once you've pressed stop on the launch key to finish the recording, you can turn off the click track by pressing click again on the launch key. Double click the clip you just recorded into and use the start and end markers to select your best take and use quantize if you need to correct your timing. If you want to adjust the individual volume of each drum, then you can use the arrow on that track header to reveal a volume fader for each drum. Now let's mute track number four, the second melodics track, and record our own melodies using the same techniques that we just used to record drum patterns. I'm gonna put the pads back into session mode by holding shift and pressing session. You can use the track left and right buttons on the launch key to select use a melody. Launch the scene and then jam out some ideas for melodies or chords. This track is in F minor, so let's use the scale function on the launch key to keep us in key. Press scale to turn it on, and then the screen tells us what scale we have selected, which is C minor by default. To change the selected scale, hold shift and press scale. Press the desired root note on the keys, in our case F, which is to the left of the three black notes and use the pads to select the scale type, which will be shown on screen. We're gonna go with pad one, which is minor. Now, any notes that you play on the keys will be in the scale of F minor, keeping you perfectly in key. I'm gonna press this red pad on the launch key to start recording into a MIDI clip. Press stop when you're finished recording and again, double click on the MIDI clip and use the start and end markers to select your best take and use quantize if you need to correct your timing. <laughs> 